is applied and in Virginia College we try to emphasize the application of science in daily life. Um, we encourage the students to apply the concepts taught in a class in their respective subjects to be able to survive after school. And uh, very many students happily are coming out with very many projects that are beautiful in respect of in the respective subjects which they take. Uh, this year we have a number of them who have produced very beautiful projects. I want specifically to hand you over this time to a group of two students that have thought about a very, very good, impressive project of how to apply physics in daily life and inventing. And this time they have invented a sewing machine. Hopefully they will be like the Makerere students who invented a car. If this sewing machine can be improved, it can be used by the ordinary person using ordinary materials. I hand you over to the group of the students. Start. Yes, I'm Kali Jero from Ginger College uh, Six Science, and my colleague is Omar Repoan from the same school in Six Science. Uh, we are going to show you how we can apply the knowledge we learn in class to develop machines and other things which are important for our community. Now before us is a simple sewing machine and uh, as you can see before you now we have applied simple principles here to create motion that does the stitching. Now the main uh, mechanisms we have used there are levers, we have used the cam, then we have used the pulleys. Now I'll first show you where we have used these systems now. With the pulleys, uh, as you'll see later as we work the machine, we have used for transmitting the turning effect from the handle to the system which moves the needle up and down. Then the cam, as you'll also see later, is used for moving a lower bar forward and backward so that it interacts with the needle bar. Then uh, uh, we have here the lever system which is uh, which which is based on the principle of moments uh, taking uh, taking an example of uh, a situation where i may apply a force here which will in turn overcome the opposite force thereby causing the needle and the pressure foot to raise mm -hmm. and that and it, it can help me withdraw the cloth from the machine uh, so now we're going to take you to tour around the machine now, as you look at the, the, the belt, okay, the pulley belt, you can see it is not ordinary because uh, we, are, we had to add some metal pieces to increase the friction on it so that uh, it does the motion accurately. Then, okay, he can be turning as you have a look at it, as you see the level of accuracy. Then inside here, uh, we have used cams. Now, these cams are like those that are in an engine. Uh, they drive similar cams of the same dimensions, so that the, the, the motion is the same. Now, in this, uh, you can see these are threads, and this is aluminum wire got from hangers. We could have used metal rods instead of these threads, but we realized that uh, for them, okay, these strings, at each moment, only one is tight and the others are loose. Now, and also, at this moment, we had to twist the angle of turn, and you can bear with the witness that you could not use metal rods to twist at those angles, otherwise there would be a lot of uh, collision with others. So the strings are doing it perfectly well there. Then, now, the, the turning effect from the hand here is transmitted by uh, this cam to this lower one, uh, which moves uh, this body. Now, the, onto this is attached a rod, as you can see behind here. Now, this is what the disc you're seeing is attached to this rod. Now. At the tip of this road, we have a four-pronged fork which looks like this, and it is what does the sewing. Then, uh, coming back here, this same motion is transmitted to this lower one. Now, as you can see, it is connected to another mechanism here, which is uh, 
now it is it is meant to transmit uh, continuous circular motion to the front. It moves what we call a feed dock, and that is what pushes the cloth forward. Then uh, the same motion here is transmitted to this side, where the pulley moves it to this front part, and it is what moves the needle mechanism. Now let him take you through the needle mechanism and how it is moved by the belt. Well, we, we have uh, a cam system that is connected to, that is just connected to, it's around here. It is connected to this uh, pulley, which in turn moves in a circular motion to create the up and the up and down motion of the needle bar, as you as seen. You can take over. You may take over. All right. Now, when you look down here, uh, the same mechanism I showed you before, which moves what we call the feed dock. It's right in front here. It is what moves the cloth. Uh, forward and backward. I mean forward as you're doing the sewing. Now, I have a look at, now this is what we call the needle bar. It has a four-pronged fork as you see in front there. Now as he turns his, okay, the crank, you see that the needle bar interacts with the needle. Then, okay, move it forward. It has interacted with the needle. Now it picks the thread from it and as it is coming back uh, at that point, the needle passes through it and picks the thread away from it. Now, um, I think we should take you uh, to two as it does the sewing. Okay. Now, as he fixes the thread, um, we can keep on learning other things about it in detail. Now, he was trying to illustrate how the needle bar moves forward and backward. Now, this is what is driven by the chain. Uh, these are the grooves on which the, the metallic things on the, on the belt moves. Now, it keeps on moving this in a continuous circular motion. Now, this is a, a, a fixed rod, it is not a string. So, it means it will keep on pushing this in that forward and backward motion. It will not make it into a circular motion, as you'll see here. So, that means this top will be rocking up and down. So, this fixed rod will in turn keep on moving the needle back up and down. Now, this four-pronged four pronged fork and this interact in a way that as the needle is slowing down, as you'll see later, it moves and picks the thread from the needle. Then the needle goes back and it also moves back as it twists it through an angle of 90 degrees. So as it pushes, as it moves back, the needle, it is time that the needle will move back and pick the very, push another line of thread through this loop that it will have made, and hence will have made a stitch. Now, some other thing about the machine as it fixes it, uh, the thread, moves from this point, which is a reel of thread. Then it moves through, uh, it is also a lever here. Now it moves the thread through, there is a tight fixing that uh, creates tension in the thread so that only a particular mount is allowed to move through. Now this is designed in a way that as it turns, it turns together with uh, the needle, okay, the lever which moves the needle back. So it takes up the thread in, in bits. So the stitching is done in those bits. Now, let's take a look as he turns. Now, <coughs> as you realize he's uh, doing the turning at a slow pace, for one reason that, uh, as you can see, the whole machine is made out of paper box. Then we have aluminum wires, which were hung as before. Uh, we have some rubber sandals, and this is a cloth. Uh, some other few wires, which were from electrical parts. Now, you realize the things you can get freely around you, even in school, like for this case, this one. Uh, we, use, we used bonding elements like uh, wood glue for bonding the paper parts. Then we used uh, super glue for those parts where wood glue could not work. Then we came up with this solid form. Uh, now as it turns the machine, you'll be a bit patient and watch as the motion goes on down there. After a free, few turns, we expect him to turn the bottom as we see how the stitching is actually done. Now, in this case, you'll also realize we are using a material which doesn't look like cloth but it was the simplest we could find at this moment for the explanation. Now you're hearing some sounds in the background. Now that is uh, the, the thread being tightened and the inside of this box being hollow. It, uh, it creates a resonance which amplifies the sound instead. Now I think we can have a look at how the stitching no is practically done.
right. Now, as, as it does, does the turning, uh, let's have a look at the interaction between the needle and the needle bar. Now, this is what we call the needle bar, and this is the needle which has come with the line of thread. Now, it has picked the thread, it continues forward, it twists it through an angle of 90 degrees. As the thread, as the needle comes back, it passes through the loop which it has made, and the, needle, the thread is tightened. And at the same time, the needle bar has to come back and pick the, the thread from it. And another line of thread is fixed through the same loop. Hence, a continuous chain of sewing is done. Let's show it some more time. Now, there is some disturbance because of inaccuracies, because the body is weak, and by turning it upside down, we're actually uh, reducing its efficiency. Well, you can have a look at that, how that is done. That we have learned from class to create things which are important to our environment. And by the use of simple materials in the, in the environment, we can actually create an atmosphere where science can be used in our daily lives. Uh, we thank you for going through the whole presentation.